So a few weeks ago, Neural DSP released a new plugin, the Imperial Mark II from Tone King. Now this piqued my interest because I actually have the amp, the real amp uh, that I've been using for about six months now. Now I use plugins all the time for mixing and recording, but I very rarely ever use a guitar amp plugin. For me, it's kind of a, uh, a last resort situation. I'm traveling, I have my laptop, I wanna practice something, then I might pull up a plugin. But this new plugin, this is right up my alley. This is based off of a real amp that I have in a real room. So today I'm gonna to take my laptop and we're gonna compare the plugin to the actual amp. And this is really only for my own interest. I reached out to Neural DSP this morning and I asked them for a copy of the plugin. They're not sponsoring this video, neither is Tone King, uh, but I did receive both the amp and the plugin for free through the channel, so there is that. But other than that, there's no sponsorship. Nobody's seeing this video before it goes live. These are my own thoughts. Before we jump in though, a quick plug, please subscribe. I'm coming up on half a million subscribers, which is something I actually never thought would happen. Uh, so thank you, first of all, for helping get this channel here. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to click the button down below uh, and click the bell. You can also check out my brand new video courses down there, the Fretboard Fundamentals Slide Guitar Mini Course, as well as the Chords and Rhythm Course. All right, so with all that out of the way, let's get a session pulled up. Okay, so here I've got my plugin set up, um, and I decided to try this out on my laptop. I've got a uh, M1 MacBook Pro, just the 13-inch and I'm using my Apollo X4. And the reason I'm using the X4 here is because I needed the IO for my shotgun mic, as well as the uh, guitar DI for the plugin and the uh, microphone for the amplifier. Now I've got an ABY box set up here for the shootout, but we're gonna start by just playing the plugin. Um, I just installed it, got it pulled up here, and this is as it comes basically when you first open it up. So uh, let's check it out. It's a little quiet. I'm gonna bring up the output just a touch. Already, that's pretty good. Now, just looking at my Imperial across the uh, across the way here, I'm gonna match the settings here. So this is as I left my amp last time I played it. So uh, reverb's about here, and let's check the speaker quickly. We'll put up a 57 and then we'll switch to a 421 because that's probably what I'm going to end up using for the shootout. So let's see what this sounds like. Okay, already, I mean, that feels pretty good. Sounds pretty good. Um, I like the reverb as well. The reverb sounds pretty convincing. In fact, let's push the reverb and see how springy it can get. Okay, I like this so far. I mean, that feels like what the amp sounds like to me in my head from playing it. It feels right, it feels pretty close. Let's bring the reverb down and let's push the rhythm channel and just see how it breaks up. Yeah, that's impressive. I mean, I would use that for sure. Let's try the tremolo now. So they've modeled what, uh, one of my favorite things about the tremolo on this amp is the wave shape feels about right. We'll shoot it out, but uh, I like also how traditional Fender amps do this where the tremolo circuit is after the spring reverb. So you can, you get that nice modulation, that amplitude modulation of the spring. We can accentuate that by pushing the reverb, pushing the tremolo. That's a super cool effect I like to use. Oh, that's interesting. You hear that like kind of fizzle? I wonder if that's 
modeled after the real amp or if I encountered something in the plug-in here that's um, not quite right. Yeah, it's like it's overdriving the spring tank. That's cool. All right, so now let's switch to the lead channel. And I'm just going to start with how it is pulled up here. Now I'm going to match where mine is at currently. And again, this is where I left it last time I played the real amp. <laughs> I mean, that feels about right. Bring it back to something a little bit more tame. Bring the tone back. Now, one thing I like about the real amp is on the lead channel, they have this mid-bite control, which is really usable. I mean, it's usable all the way through the range. Um, and what it's doing is it's it's shifting sort of the mid-range of the amp, like where that peak is in the EQ curve, but it's also shifting low end and high end together. So it's kind of doing the job of a three band EQ, but in one uh, in one pot. So the thing is like with it all the way down, it's a little darker, a little warmer, but it's still usable. And then as you sweep it up, it really shifts the uh, the entire feel of the amp. Also got this impressive uh, cab section so we can sit and move these mics around uh, and I'm gonna get this set up typically how I would mic it and then I'm gonna mirror it on the cabinet in there so typically I like to put my SM57 right on the edge uh, of where the dust cap meets the cone and then I'll take uh, something else in this case we're gonna use a 421 and I like to put the 421 a little bit darker so a little bit closer to the edge of the cone So that's just the 421. And that's really useful and an easy way to audition these sounds is just to mute one side and move the mic position uh, until you get to where you like it, which is pretty much what you would do in real life. Okay, so now we are going to shoot out the plug-in against the actual amp. So what we've got going is my Imperial Mark II is plugged into its own 112 cab, which I've got set up in my bathroom attached to the studio here. And I've got it mic'd up with a 57 and an MD421, just like I have in the plug-in here. Now I did my best to get the mic placement exactly like you see here on the screen. Uh, and I think we're pretty close. And like we did before, I have matched the knobs on the real life amp versus the plug-in. So I've got my ABY box here and we're just gonna switch between them and see how close things really are. Let's start with the uh, the plug-in. Okay, so what I'm hearing here in the room, uh, first of all, the reverb is really, really close. Like, super close. Here's the amp again. And the plug-in. I mean, they did a really, really good job of that reverb. Okay, so to my ear, listening back, 
The plugin, uh, the difference mainly is in the high end and in the upper mid range. The plugin seems to have more presence overall. It's a little brighter, a little more shimmery. The amp, the way I've got it set up um, in that room with those mics and everything is a little bit more mid rangey. It's a little darker. But now let's switch over uh, and check out the lead channel on both the amp and the plugin and see how that works. So that's it. They should be matched. Let's start with the plugin. <laughs> Continue to tweak from there and get super close if you want. If you're really concerned about getting as close to the amp as possible, you can do that. But I think this shows that there is a bit of a difference between the plug-in and the real life amp, at least the amp as I've got it set up here. Again, your mileage may vary if you try this type of shootout at home. At the end of the day though, I do think the plug-in actually sounds really good. Uh, it's really usable. It does the same type of thing that I want from this type of amp and I can get really usable sounds out of it. So I'm gonna continue to tweak a little bit and see what other types of sounds I can get out of this rig. <laughs> to say I'm really impressed with this plugin. This is the first time I've played an amp plugin that I felt like I really connected with and actually felt like I would use on a semi-regular basis. Now again, the plugin thing is not typically what I would reach for first because oftentimes when I'm recording guitar, uh, I reach for a real amp or one of the modelers first, but there is something nice and convenient about just working out of the DAW that you're already in. Just pulling up an instance of a plugin and having a really usable amp sound, I really see the value in it. Now, I definitely wouldn't gig with anything like this. I know that there are players that do, and if you find success in that and it works for you, then that's great. It's not for me. Uh, this is strictly for a practice or a recording situation. And again, I don't know that it would necessarily be the first thing that I would pull up. Maybe that's just old habits coming out, but there is something that I still like about working with a real amp, the tactile nature of the knobs and the switches. I feel like I work a little bit better that way than just clicking around a screen with a trackpad or a mouse. With that said though, I think Neural DSP did a really good job uh, with this plugin. There's some incredibly usable and musical sounds uh, the stomp box section, which we didn't get into in this video, is actually super great, as are these post effects, these time-based and modulation effects, I think are super usable. Uh, and if you go through some of these artist presets here, like I just played one of Pete Thorne's presets, um, Rabia Masad has some really cool stuff in here. I mean, there's some awesome sounds. So overall, yeah, I think I would recommend this. If you are in the market for a classic amp sound and a plugin, I think Neural DSP did an incredible job with this, as they've done with all their other plugins, uh, this is just the first one that I felt like was meant for a player like myself. Now, does it compare to the actual amp? 
Yeah, I think it's close. I think it does what you want the Imperial Mark II to do, which are those classic American and tweed sounds, those mid-scooped black panel uh, fender sounds, the tweed sounds. The, the plugin seems to handle all that stuff no problem. Uh, does it match up exactly like the setup I have recorded in here? No, but the reality is that doesn't really matter. Um, I could change just about anything about my setup in here, where the, the cab was placed, what mics I had on the cab, and have a completely different result than I was getting here today. So it's kind of six of one, half dozen the other in that respect. But overall, Neural DSP, good job. I really like this plugin. I think I will start using this uh, more and more. But let me know, what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments section down below. Uh, in the description box, I'll also have links to this plugin as well as the amp. While you're in the description box, be sure to check out uh, my brand new video course, Fretboard Fundamentals Intro to Slide Guitar, as well as uh, the Rhythm and Chords course and just the overall Fretboard Fundamentals course. All that is linked down below. Let me know if you wanna see more reviews like this, more plugins, uh, more things along these lines. This is kind of a new area for me here on the channel and I'd like to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Rhett Shull, and remember there is no plan B.